All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Acer laptop. This is a Swift SF314-54 series. All right, the exact model is SF314-54-53BQ. All right, so let me see if there's any other information here. Um, they just call it a Swift 3, so I guess most people will probably find it by this Acer Swift 3. Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and open this thing up. It looks like we're going to be using a T5, Torx 5, or possibly a T6. Let's see. We'll try the T6 first. Oh, yeah, it's a T6. So we're going to be using a T6 or Torx 6, Torx 6 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. Just so you know, there's a battery reset hole here. Okay, so if you needed to reset the battery for some reason, there's a little hole. And you can use a bent or folded out paper clip to press on that. You can press it for about 15 seconds if you have issues starting up your computer. Sometimes um, if the motherboard's having issues, pressing that will help. Anyways, you want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So I'm going to kind of keep these three in one row. Then we got these two, and then we got four down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove all the screws. The customer told me that their keyboard randomly stopped uh, working and then they shut it down and after that they couldn't turn it back on because the power button is part of the keyboard. So what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be checking the keyboard ribbon cable to see if anything is wrong with that. <clears throat> Hopefully they're lucky and the keyboard won't need to be replaced. It's pretty strange that a keyboard would just randomly go out. Um, without anything happening. He said it was just left on his desk. So I wasn't sure, I was asking him if there was any chance that someone spilled something and he said no. So let's go ahead and get this all opened up. Let's see if we can open this with a suction cup. Uh, most won't, but let's see. All right, we'll try this first. I'm gonna keep my fingernail on this gap and that's not happening. Okay, so what we're gonna try next is we're gonna open this up and usually what I do is I get my fingernails in the gap right there, okay? And I'll push with my thumb on the palm rest, not on the trackpad, just the palm rest. And let's see if we can pop it out that way, okay? And it doesn't seem to want to pop out this way either. Hmm. So how are we going to get this apart? Okay. It feels... The design seems like it should come out that way. If it doesn't, we can always try this way, but I don't think that's going to work. So we might have to use some metal pry tools for this model. Let's see, let's try from the side here and see if we can pop this out. Okay, that's actually popping out a little bit. Um, as you can see, we're creating a gap there. So maybe once we get a gap started on the side, we can work our way to the front. Okay, there we go. All right, you can see we got the sides out and now it's actually popping out the back. So let's work our way across the back and see if we can pop that out or if it's going to be stuck. Um, that seems to be stuck pretty strong. Oh, there we go. Not too bad. So I'm just running my fingernail along here, pulling up on this, and it does seem to be popping up. So there we go. It looks like you pop the sides on the back first, and then I don't know what's going on with the front. Oh, there we go. That came out pretty easily after like kind of wiggling it and moving it. Um, but there we go. Got the bottom cover off. Let's see what we got here. So the cable is just right there. I don't see how it can pull itself out. Um, the battery doesn't seem to be inflated or anything. If you're wondering, the battery model number is right here. AC14B7K. I'm going to double check. I'm going to pull the battery out. Um, I can actually also try pushing the battery reset thing here. So I'm going to press this. I didn't use the... Um, paper clip method. I'm just going to do it like this since I opened it anyways. Okay, we're going to hold it for about 15 seconds and we'll see if this uh, resolves anything. So I didn't really see where I started, but I think that's about 15 seconds. So, all right, let's go ahead and open this up and see if the power button does anything. And that actually worked. So I might not have actually even needed to open this thing up, but uh, let's go ahead and go over what we see inside. I'm gonna shut this down real quick. Okay, sorry, I don't wanna show the the username or anything, but um, 
I'm going to double check the cables because sometimes it could be something is a little bit loose and maybe pressing that kind of uh, helped, but you can see, okay, it turned off. All right, so I'm going to actually take the battery out here real quick. Um, we are going to switch over to, it's either a PH1 or PH0. Okay, PH1 or JS1 screwdriver, okay. We're going to remove that screw. You want to make sure if you're removing screws that the screwdriver isn't slipping. That's very important. You don't want to strip the screws. I've had some people that try and just force the screws out and end up damaging things. Let's actually also disconnect the battery cable. If you're just upgrading the SSD or the RAM, you don't need to do this, but um, this makes it safer to work on. We're going to go ahead and wiggle this at the wings and pull that out just like that. Then we got to lift that, that up slightly. Okay. I don't know why they put this tape here, but they did. So we're gonna carefully peel this away. All right, and then hopefully we can lift the battery up now. Let me zoom out here. Okay, and we're just gonna try and lift from the corners here. There you go. And here we have the battery. Okay, um, we are gonna check the keyboard cable. What I'm gonna do, um, just to be extra safe, I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna press and hold the power button which I don't know how it would do anything if the keyboard was broken or not connected, um, but we're going to hold this for 15 seconds. If you want to be safe, you can also hold the other button inside 15 seconds, and that will probably help as well. But um, yeah, okay, I think that's been 15 seconds. If you want, you can also hold this one for like 15 seconds. All right, anyways, I'm not going to really um, take everything out, but I'm going to show you guys what's here. You got this cable here for the USB port as well as the SD card slot and the indicator lights. All right. These cables, they have these little flip latches that let you, um, you flip that and then you can pull these cables out. All right. Wireless card here. If you want to see how to remove those, you basically just pull up at the tails, but I have videos where I remove them on other models. I'm not going to do it on this one because I don't want to risk damaging it. All right. It looks like on some models, they'd actually use a shorter battery here, and then you can actually fit a two and a half inch SATA hard drive here. I might be wrong, but it looks like, I mean, they have this, it says HDD1, so you can probably put a uh, two, um, two and a half inch SATA hard drive here, or SATA uh, SSD. All right, you got the keyboard backlight cable, keyboard connector, uh, trackpad connector here. You got a, this looks like a SATA... Yeah, this is an M.2 SATA SSD. One screw, it pops up slightly at an angle, and then you can pull it out. All right. CPU is soldered to the motherboard, if I didn't already mention that. You got this cable for the um, <clears throat> fan here. Okay. Doesn't look too dirty or dusty inside, so we'll probably leave it as is. You got the LCD LVDS connector. If you're going to mess with this, it's very important that you disconnect the battery, open it up, and press and hold the power button for 15 seconds. All right, then you got the DC jack or charge port connector there. Um, speaker connector right here. And it looks like this actually connects to the other speaker all the way over here. So one connector for both speakers, like most laptops. And then you got the uh, CMOS BIOS battery here. Um, it's underneath the SSD right there. Um, somewhat of a standard size, but you do need to make sure you have this connector connector if you need to if you wanted to replace it. All right. As for the RAM, let me actually open this up to show you. Okay, we'll zoom in here. The RAM is under this metal cover. Um, I'm assuming because this cover is so tall that it is going to be replaceable, but let's see. All right. So usually I'll try and get underneath a corner, but this one is pretty snug down so i don't know if i'll be able to get it out oh there we go okay i got my fingernail underneath then what i do after i get one side up i'll move my finger over to the other side and then push down here and that will kind of leverage it out okay just like that and there we go and you want to be careful with this metal box because you can short stuff here so removing the battery and pressing holding the power button will help with that all right you can pull these two tabs to the side and then you can pull this out then you got the RAM here, okay, this is a PC4-2400T, it's not focusing, there you go, PC4-2400T, there's only 4 gigs. I'm assuming, yeah, there's RAM underneath here that's soldered to the motherboard, so sadly, there's already 4 gigs um, soldered to the board, I think, and then you have this removable 4 gigs. Um, you can upgrade it, but usually it's best if you have matching sticks, so... I mean, if you want, you can put like an 8 gig or 16 gig, and then you can have 16 plus 4 to have like 20 gigs. 
but again, um, that's not really great. I mean, if you're actually running low on RAM, then it's better than having, then it's better having more RAM than having, um, matching sticks. But if you're not running out of RAM, it's better to have matching than to, uh, mismatch it. Anyways, let's go ahead and, oops, let me zoom in here so you can see the keyboard connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these two tabs back like that. And it did, I did notice it did slide in a little. So what we're going to do, just make sure it slid in all the way. So I have a feeling this slid just a little bit out. I don't know how, but it did because when I opened this, it seemed like it went in a tiny bit. All right, we're going to now push this or pinch these two back in. Okay, to make sure the keyboard is locked into place. There we go. All right, and let's get the cable back in. Or sorry, not the cable, the battery back in. All right, again, very simple. We're just gonna drop it back into place. Um, you do have to slide these bottom parts in because there are these little feet that go into these little um, areas there. Okay, then you just lower this down. All right, it helps to kind of have the battery slightly lifted up. Uh, when you plug this in. Oh, if I didn't mention there's this cable down here for the fingerprint sensor Yeah, I don't think I mentioned that but um, yeah, let's go ahead and put this thing back together So we're gonna hold this slightly up All right, make sure if you're replacing the battery that you have the red ones going towards the RAM and the black wires going towards the fan Okay, you don't want to flip that upside down and you also want to try and get the cable in um, What do you say? I guess we'll do it this way first so you want to try and get the cable in um, straight. You don't want to go at an angle. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay. As you can see, it's kind of like going weird at an angle. So you don't want that. Pull that back out. And then try and push them both at the same time. There we go. The reason you don't want that is because if the thing is tilted, then it's not going to go into the wires, right? Because the wires slot like this. Okay. And if you have it tilted, like, so if you angle it, you might get these wires in, but then the rest here will get like smashed. So you want to be very careful with that. I've seen some customers that tried to change their own batteries and damage the connector that way. All right. So we're going to now get the battery back in and we're going to put this tape back down. What is this? There's some, oh, there's some broken plastic in here. So we're going to take that out and throw that. All right. Then we'll just line this tape back up, stick it back down good oh i think that's what happened so this battery cable is pushing on here so i think that kind of over time pushed it and pulled it out kind of not a good design that they would overlap it like that but it is what it is can't really do anything about a bad design all right let's clean this a little bit it doesn't seem to have much dust so we should be good all right and let's go ahead and put the bottom cover back on so let me zoom back out here Okay, flip this over, line it up. Um, we're going to actually put the bottom back in first. I don't know if it really matters because I think they just clip in. Yeah, make sure you clip those in. I'm slightly holding this side up and then you can go around the sides and the back and just make sure everything clips into place. Okay, looks good, looks good. All right, and then we just get all the screws back in. Hopefully I didn't forget oh shoot I forgot the battery screws okay let's go ahead and pop this back out I'm gonna try this with the suction cup again okay I got a little bit of an edge of my fingernail in which might help but yeah no that doesn't work too well so the other oh, shit. the other method works a lot better where you kind of open this a little bit okay and then kind of push on it like that all right, there we go. And we got, oops, it dropped, did it drop back in? Yeah, it dropped back in. Okay, so yeah, pull on this. You'll get this to kind of start popping up and then you can kind of work your way over just like that. Okay, and once you get that, you can continue working on it, pulling it over this way again. Okay, there we go, all right. And then we're going to wiggle that. There we go. I forgot the screws for the battery. Let's make sure to put those back in. All right. You know, I've had some people bring me computers from other um, 
repair shops missing all this like bunch of screws and i wonder if it's like they do something like that and they're like forget it we'll just leave the screws out or something that's kind of i don't know pretty crazy either that or they don't organize the screws and they just throw them everywhere and then they don't know where the screws came from so that's why i always recommend that you put the screws in order like that okay all right let's see why are these not going in there there we go okay get everything snapped in and then we're going to switch back over to the T6 or Torque 6 screwdriver and get all the base screws in. And that's pretty much all there is to this laptop. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, again, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, other than that, you're welcome to stay as I get all the screws back in, but that's all there is to it. Alright, let's get all these back in. Last four. Okay. And then we'll make sure to power it up again, make sure everything is running. And we should be good to go. All right, let's flip this thing back over. Open this up and power it on. And it looks good. We got power. I am going to want to test the keyboard as well, though I'm assuming since the power button's working, I'm assuming the rest is working. Um, oh, yeah, it did work because I used the arrow keys. Um, anyways, that's pretty much it. I'll show you a little bit of the screen. Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and shut this thing down, and that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right. Okay, let's drop this. Bye.